Point to you when you're on. Uh oh, guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Huh? Anybody? Julie, hey, guess what day it is? Oh, come on, I know you can hear me. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> Leslie, guess what today is? It's hump day. Woo -woo! Hello, I'm Geneva Nelson, Director of Christian Education at St. Stephen Church, where the Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby is the pastor. And we certainly greet you and invite you to join us at this Hump Day Bible Study Sunday School lesson. We will be studying from Not a Fan, very great book that I suggest that you get for your personal library. And we will be studying with this and I invite you each week at this day, this time, to get your Bible, get your pencil, your highlighters, and join us as we study Not a Fan. Our lesson for today will be entitled DTR. Now, in case you're wondering what that stands for, stick around and you will find out. This lesson is designed for us to think about whether we are a fan are a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, several weeks ago, you know, we're moving towards the series and playing of uh, championship games and, and Super Bowl. And so a couple of weeks ago, there was a game on between the Ravens and the Chargers. Lamar Jackson, who is from the University of Louisville, Ra ra ra! That's where I'm from. Uh, was the quarterback? Now, the Ravens had started with a bad season, and they were four and five when their quarterback Flacco, Joe Flacco, was uh, hurt. So they put in Lamar Jackson. At that time, remember the the 
their season was four and five, four wins, five losses. Everybody had counted the Ravens out. Now, they put in Lamar Jackson, who turned things around. And his, up under him, they were six and one. They won the American Football North uh, Conference, and then they were bound for the playoffs. Lamar, first game, never played in championship games like this before, and he had a terrible game. The fans forgot just that quick who had gotten them to the playoffs, and they began to uh, let the coach know that they wanted the other quarterback in. So a fan or a follower, that's what we need to talk about when we talk about are we a fan or a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, if I asked you, are you a fan or are you a follower, I bet you would say, I'm a follower. Why? Because you come to church, you come to Sunday school, you put in your money, perhaps you might even sing in the choir, and you got I'm for Jesus bumper sticker on your car. And so that makes you a follower, right? Well, let's, let's look at our lesson and see just who is a follower and who's a fan. Let's go to Matthew chapter 21. We're going to look at verses 6 and 9, and I will be reading from the English Standard Version. Matthew chapter 21, verses 6 and 9. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Question, are these disciples fans or followers? Now, some of you probably thinking, those 12 disciples that was with Jesus all the time, they are followers. The other people, they are fans. But what if I told you I see them all as fans? Yes, that's right. Even the 12 that was with him, fans. Why do I say that? Because before the, this is Sunday, what we call Palm Sunday. This is what we're just reading. Jesus riding into Jerusalem, Palm Sunday. By Friday, the ones who are in the crowd will be saying, crucify him. And where will the disciples be? They will be running because we will see in the gospel according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke that when they come for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Mark even says one of the disciples ran out of their clothes and ran down the street naked. They were so determined to get away from Jesus. Now, is that a fan or a follower? Well, let's, a let's answer this question. What is a fan? A fan is an enthusiastic admirer. Woo! An enthusiastic admirer admirer. They admire you. But fans are fickle. Just like what I was talking about with Lamar Jackson. Fickle. The fans we just got through reading about are uh, screaming for Jesus. Fickle. And so that's one of the things that we do. You see, fans like to sit on the sideline and cheer. Well, guess what? Jesus is not looking for people to sit on the sideline and shout, go Jesus, go Jesus. No, that's not what he wants. He needs you to be a follower. So what is a follower? A follower is a supporter, a committed person, a devotee who will be there regardless of the circumstances. Now, so let's diagnose fandom. Fans often confuse their admiration for devotion. Now, as fans, now we're talking about for, forget the Baltimore Ravens and all of that. Let's just consider Jesus. 
many fans and persons in the church admire Jesus and they mistake that for devotion. Now, just because you come to church on Sundays and you admire what the pastor said or you got excited for a moment, that does not necessarily make you a follower. You confuse admiration for devotion. Another thing, fans mistake their knowledge of Jesus for intimacy with Jesus. There is a difference. When you know somebody, and we'll talk more about that one even next week. When you know somebody, you know them, not know of, knowledge of, but know them. And you have to ask yourself, do I really know Jesus? And if we did, we wouldn't get so upset about so many things. Fans assume their good intention make up for the apathetic faith. Their good intention. See, we have intentions of coming to Sunday school, coming to uh, choir rehearsal, coming to the worship service, and we think that makes up for our pitiful faith. If we really knew Jesus, if we really knew him and believe what he said he can and will do, then we would not go off the deep end so quick. So we take that, our good intentions, because I have my Bible here, and I'll bring my Bible, and I got this big old Bible. And by the way, it's the Geneva Bible. Uh, it's 1599 Geneva Bible. Uh, it's my Bible, but that's not my birth date now, so don't get that mixed up. Just a little fun. <laughs> but... We want to be followers of Jesus, but we don't want to do what it takes to be a follower. Now, like I said, we want to sit on the sideline and, and cheer, go Jesus. But guess what? Jesus told us to go. Not he go, but now we are to go. So, where do you start? in determining if you really are a follower of Jesus. How do we figure this out? Am I a fan or am I a follower? Well, let's start with a DD, a DTR talk with Jesus. Now, I promised you I was going to tell you what DTR meant, and that means define the relationship. Let's talk about how much do you care for Jesus. Now, let me give you just a hypothetical situation. Now, <clears throat> you're sitting in a restaurant, and you order yourself dinner and something to drink. And guess what? Suddenly, Jesus appears, and there's Jesus. He sits down across from you. Your first thought is to let him know um, of Jesus now. This is a Pepsi I'm drinking. This is a soft drink. It's, this is not liquor. This is a soft drink. But before you can even say that, you see the look on his face. He wants to have a serious talk with you. So you say, um, Jesus, what's wrong? And he says, I want to go straight to the heart of the matter. And he looks you in the eye and he says, it's time for us to define our relationship. Where is this going? Woo. In other words, Jesus wants to know, how do you feel about him? I know, I know you will write off, say, and you know the song, uh, yes, Jesus loves me, and oh, how I love Jesus. But do you really love him? Or is your relationship with him exclusive? Is he the only one in your life? Or <laughs> is he just a casual weekend relationship? 
If I had the mic, I would drop it right there because that says it all. Too many of us have a casual weekend Sunday morning. Oh, wait a minute. Sometimes on Wednesdays. Relationship with Jesus. But he wants to know, has it moved from there? Are we still just on the Sunday morning time? Is he first in your life? That's what Jesus wants to know. Now, I'm sure many of you say, yes, he's first. But here again, let me ask you, is it casual or is it constant? Now, I know there used to be a song that they would sing in church, always the men's brotherhood. They were saying, when you see me coming, I got Jesus on my mind. Now, <laughs> I would always laugh and say, yeah, right, right. But Jesus wants to know how often is he on your mind? When you feel your back up against the wall, or when somebody, when you're in trouble, or you need something, is that when he comes to mind? Here's the next question. Have things moved past infatuation and admiration towards deeper devotion and dedication? Now, that's, that's, that's a good one. Let me, let me say that one again. Have things moved past infatuation and admiration towards deeper devotion and dedication? Again, are you a fan or are you a follower? Well, let's go a little bit deeper. Let's go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verses 60 through 66. This time I'm going to be reading in the New Living uh, Translation. Now, and one thing that I would suggest, if you're serious about Bible study, have yourself more than one translation of the Bible. So this time we're reading in the New Living Translation. John chapter 6, starting at <clears throat> verse 60. Many of his disciples, now notice what I said. Many of his disciples said, this is very hard to understand. See, Jesus had been talking to them about some things, hard things. And so this is their response. This is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining. So he said to them, does this offend you? Then what will you think if you see the Son of Man ascend to heaven again? The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you do not believe me. For Jesus knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe. And he knew who would betray him. Then he said, this is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. At this point, now listen to verse 66. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. To me, John chapter 6, verse 66, is one of the saddest verses in the scriptures. Now, Judges 16 and 20 in the um, Old Testament, in John chapter 6, 66 is the one in the New Testament. The one that says in Judges, uh, it's talking, chap chapter 16, verse 20, says, and the Spirit left him, talking about Samson, and he didn't even know it. Ooh, that is sad. The Spirit had left him, and he didn't even know it. Now, in John chapter 6, verse 66, he says, at this point, many of his disciples, and I keep coming to this, disciples, we're not just talking about just people, disciples, learners, those who were willing to follow Jesus. 
many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. So, fan a follower. You see, because fans find it difficult when we look at them, fans find it difficult to choose between religion and a relationship with Jesus. Ooh, I'm going to tell you, next week I'm going to bring the mic because I'm going to drop it on y'all. Yes, indeed. It's, this, it's a tough decision. They would rather have religion. But let me just stop here for a moment and tell you this. Christianity is not a religion. It is a way of life. It is a relationship with Christ. And why I'm stopping and saying this, if you have any questions or anything that need to be clarified, then you feel free to contact us. You can go to the chat room or you can send the question in and we'll try to straighten it out for you here and now. But if we don't get to it, we'll come back to you next week. But religion, people religiously go to work. People religiously go to the ball game. People religiously go uh, uh, to work. But Christianity is not a religion. It's a way of life. That's how come uh, earlier in the scriptures, you will find that disciples talked about walking in the way. So it's a relationship, it's a way of life. But we find it difficult to choose between religion and a relationship with Jesus. Fans also, as we see with what we just read, want comfort and convenience. Jesus wants a commitment. Ooh, comfort, convenience. And that's what's wrong with us today. We want it on our terms. You cannot have it on your terms and be a follower of Jesus. And fans don't mind a few heart-stopping moments, but Jesus wants a heart-changing life. He wants things to change inside out. Now, let me give you a couple of points to ponder. Are you one of those who compare yourself to others? See, we as fans, we compare ourselves to others. In other words, Peter made this statement once. When Jesus said that they, and in fact, right up here at uh, verse 66, it said at that point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. The very next verse Jesus looks at the 12 and said, would you leave me too? And Peter said, and to whom can we go? To whom can we turn? Who has the word of life? And then Peter also says to Jesus later, others may leave you, but I'll never leave you. See, Peter does not recognize himself as a fan. But guess what? you a fan because when <laughs> the young girl said, are you one of those disciples? Peter immediately turned and said, no, nah, I don't know him. I don't know the man. But here we have him saying, others may leave, but I will not leave you. When we compare ourselves to others, oh, then we, yeah, we stack up high. But Jesus wants to know, are you a fan? Are you a follower? Fans do another thing. They convince themselves that they are more spiritual and more committed. And some of us are that way. Why? Because we sing in the choir. Or we on a praise team. Let's see, we go to Sunday school. I pay my tithes. I come out in midweek service. Um... But that does not make us a follower. Now, so let's look at your commitment level. Let's look at your commitment level. Is your relationship with Jesus, is it solid or is it a Sunday morning affair? Ooh. Is it solid or is it a Sunday morning affair? 
Let me ask another question. Do you feel you are more spiritual than the person who is sitting next to you? See, many times we, we want to say or uh, we will compare ourselves to someone else. And so, well, yeah, they, they just a fan because, see, they, they don't do what I do. But let me show you. <clears throat> In our city today, practically everything is closed down because the wind chill factor, even right now, got us 15 <laughs> below zero. It's cold outside, folks. I'm telling you, it's not playing. It's four degrees and it's 15 minus 15 wind chill factor. Before leaving home, watching the television, scrolling right at the bottom, all of the things that was canceled, the schools were canceled, every school seemed to be canceled, a lot of church services were canceled, and some of them already canceled for tomorrow night, but there's a big Yorval basketball game tomorrow night. I haven't seen that canceled yet. Yorval women play the Yukon women tomorrow night. That hasn't been canceled. And I will step out on this and say, I bet it won't be canceled either. But you see how quick, but the churches have already canceled. But yet, we are followers of Christ. Now, I have to believe that if we check ourselves, we will find that we are fans. Our relationship is more of a Sunday morning thing. It's more, I'm going to look to see how spiritual of somebody else is and compare myself to them. Or, or I want Jesus to grade my relationship to him on a curve. I mean, you know, you ain't so hot and you're not so hot, so guess what? Let's let's bring the curve down a little bit so that I can meet the curve. Think about it, folks. Fan, I'll follow her. Well, let's go deeper. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Now I'm in the New King James Version. And I'll warn you, I do not just use just one type of Bible. I use them all. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. Now, let's look at Nick here, Nicodemus. We see that first he comes to Jesus by night. Why by night? Because he don't want to be seen? I mean, Jesus is in the temple. He's, he's constantly around, so why by night? Because, see, Nicodemus, notice it said a ruler of the Jews, and the Jews were not fans or followers or nothing of Jesus. In fact, they were the enemies of Jesus. And perhaps Nicodemus did not want the other Pharisees to know that he had an interest in Jesus. So he comes by night. Well, let me just say this. If you are going to follow Jesus, it is going to interfere with your life. There is, I'm not criticizing Nicodemus for coming at night. I'm just glad that he came. Some come at night, some come during the day, some come early in life, some come late in life. The thing is, just make sure that you come. 
But is he trying to keep it hidden? You cannot be a good follower of Christ and be a secret agent. You just, it just won't work. You cannot be a secret agent follower of Jesus Christ. It's out. It's in the open. You see, fans don't mind a little touch-up, but Jesus wants to do a renovation. See, where you, th you want him to kind of maybe straighten this out for you, but Jesus said, no, I don't want to just straighten this out. He wants to give you a renovation. Or, since we own the uh, car metaphor, uh, fans might want Jesus to give them a little tune-up. But Jesus is thinking that he need to give you an overhaul. You really need to get some things changed. Fans think um, a little makeup is fine. But Jesus said, what about a makeover? Not a makeup, but a makeover. Fans want Jesus to inspire them. Because Nicodemus come at night and he's ready to have this conversation with Jesus. And Jesus uh, uh, I want to have a talk with you. He, he, no doubt, looking for some inspiration. But guess what? Jesus will interfere with your life. And he's saying to him, you must be born again. Ooh, what does that mean, born again? And Jesus said, uh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So, don't marvel that I say you must be born again. Well, because fans thinking of, well, a little redecorating is okay, but Jesus wants to remodel, and that's what we need. There has to be some changes. Jesus wants us to make some changes in our lives. See, Nicodemus no doubt had made a decision about Jesus. But making a decision is not the same as following Jesus. Or is it? Do you think making a decision about Jesus is the same as following Jesus? I say no. I'll give you an example why I say no. You see, when I was nine years old, I made a decision to join church and be baptized. But guess what? It was way later in my life before I became really a follower of Jesus. You see, because I went to Sunday school, I knew about Jesus, but I knew about Jesus, but I didn't know Jesus. And see, therein is a difference. We're going to tackle that one next week. So I had joined, and many of us joined church, but that because we joined church does not make us a follower. You are a fan sitting over on the side cheering, go Jesus, go Jesus, go Jesus, go. Notice the fan knows the players, know the coach, know the record, but they don't play the game. And we have got to get out of the stand and play the game. Now, the, the Spirit just brought something to my mind, and I have to share this one. You see, um, Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. For those who watch the Super Bowl, do you think they're going to watch the Super Bowl? Some of it I know watch the Super Bowl just so you can see the commercials. But the showing up football fans, they will watch the game, to see the game. They are not looking at the game to see the team huddle, and that's it. They come to see the team run the play, play the game. Now, that's what's wrong with us. We get in the huddle, and we just encourage one another, but we never break the huddle, folks. We stay in the huddle. We come on Sundays and we huddle and we hear the preacher and we're going for it. But we never play the game. And that's what fa fans don't have to play the game. 
All they have to do is just say, go, Jesus, go, Jesus, go. But we are called on as followers to play the game. And so Nicodemus, as we will see, is going to have to make a decision. He has to make a decision or a commitment. You've got to commit to Christ. Now, and Jesus will not accept Nicodemus as simply a believer. And because he believed because he came to Jesus. And he believed he had no doubt heard Jesus. But now, are you going to follow Nicodemus? And Jesus just did not want Nicodemus at night. He wanted him in the day as well. Woo! He want us day and night. He does not need us to be secret agents. He need us to be out front on the line. He needs us to speak up and to speak out about inequality, about uh, things that building walls that going to keep out certain people. He needs us in the forefront declaring and speaking for him. Now, and let us, before my time runs out, let me, let me get to show you that Jesus will move your life along where you have to come out and make a decision. Let's go to John chapter 7. Uh, new new uh, uh, King James Version, starting at verse 45. Then the officers came to the chief priests and Pharisees who said to them, why have you not bought him? Talking about Jesus. The, the chief priest has sent out the soldiers to get Jesus. The officers answered, no man ever spoke like this man. Then the Pharisees answered them, are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed in him? But the crowd that does not know the law is a curse. This is Pharisees talking. Now, check it out. Verse 50, Nicodemus, he who came to Jesus by night, being one of them, one of the Pharisees, says to them, to the Pharisees, not to the soldiers, to the Pharisees, does our law judge a man before it hears him and knows what he is doing? So now Nicodemus is saying, wait a minute, oh, wait, let's don't jump too quick. They answered, the other Pharisees, and said to him, are you also from Galilee? See, now that's a put down. When we studied the Bible, we would learn such things. This is a put down because Jesus being from Galilee, well, that's like Jesus coming from the west end of Louisville. Well, are you from the west end of Louisville as well? And they said, you look, search and look, for no prophet has arisen out of Galilee. What they were saying to Nicodemus was designed to embarrass him. In other words, they were saying to him, Nicodemus, whose side are you on? Are you on our side? Are you going to be on this man's side? And my sisters and brothers, that's one of those questions in the Bible that sooner or later you're going to have to answer. Whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? And it's not about being, well, I'm on the church's side. It's not about being on the church's side. It's about are you a follower of Jesus? That's what we want to know. So let's go on and look a little bit further. John chapter 19, New King James uh, Version, verse uh, 38. After this, Joseph of Arimathea has been a disciple of Jesus, but look at that, but secretly for the fear of the Jews. So let me just stop right there and have to say, so what hinders you from coming to Jesus? Fear of who? Fear of what? Friends, family, foes, loss of job, loss of sight. What, what, what hinders you? So, as Pilate, so Joseph Arimathea has been a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, as Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Jesus has been crucified and pronounced dead. Now Joseph of Arimathea has come wanting the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. 
Now we're going to come and see why I use this, uh, this verse. And Nicodemus, there's Nick again. Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and alos, about 100 pounds. I mean, and he came with a lot. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. So I'm saying to you, Nicodemus now have to come out and show that he no longer is a fan, but he is a follower. Then he went to Jesus by night. Now he comes out in the day and claims the body. Let me say this. There is no way to follow Jesus without him interfering with your life. Oh, yeah, there's going to be some interfering in your life. And following Jesus will cost you something every time, every time. And Nicodemus is for him. No doubt he could be pitched out of the, uh, uh, the Sanhedrin court. He's a Pharisee. So what has following Jesus cost you? What has following Jesus cost you? Are there areas in your life that are off limit to Jesus? If it is, then you need to check yourself. You might be a fan. And you need to think of this. Old song says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Nobody else can make that choice for you to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. And the other verse said, the world behind me, the cross before me. But no turning back. No turning back. I invite you to be with us again next week, same time, uh, hump day, Sunday school class. And the lesson will be, do you know him? Woo, promises to be a good lesson. So we thank you if you got any questions or if you have any concerns. Uh, but more than anything, uh, you can contact us. But here's what I would love to see. I would love to see you come and be a part of Sunday School. That's where you can get to really get to interact with all of us. Tell you what, I'll see you next week on Hump Day. <laughs>